We are right now playing the game Warzone Middle East in its current beta version 0.8.2 and we have the developers here on the Twitch. So if you have important questions for the developers, they are happy to answer them. For me, I'm just going to play against the hard eye, so AI, so we just have to some have something to watch and in the meantime we can answer your questions. So feel free to uh, to ask them now. Yeah, and you guys can we can talk about uh, the game or um, game design, uh, other RTS. So I'm the I'm one of the developers. My name is Jonathan. I'm working on the design and uh, just gonna sit here and float and see what what people say and how things go. Yeah, perfect. So who did the voiceover for the units, by the way? Uh, so we, let's see, what's the source? There's a website called Fiverr, and the voice acting was done before I got on the team. <clears throat> and I think it's mostly done by a single person. And uh, um, what we want to, so I have gone through and detailed out how I'd like to have, have the voices done, but we're not quite ready to add those voices into the game yet. So, um, but my my general, my general philosophy when it comes to voices is that I try to make each unit uh, kind of like a unique character, but RTS units uh, tend to be kind of linear. They're not a, like an ex... RTS units are not some deep character with opinions and stuff. They're more like a snapshot of a person, so you want them to be kind of dramatic, a little bit over... a little bit over-exaggerated, uh, and have unique personality. Uh, so, that's what we're doing. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, for a second, because I for a second thought that's uh, your voice in here. Uh, for example, with yeah. those uh, building building for the UNI. I, I for a second thought that's your voice. Building UNI. <laughs> yeah, not, not my voice. Okay, so there's the first question by Sky Mix RMT. Will we have a world builder kind of tool? That's a, that's a really good question. I really like world builder world builders, mod tools, and that sort of thing. It's just so far off right now that I literally just cannot answer that question. If I had my way, then yes. But the future is unknown right now for us, so uh, I don't know. Okay, here's the question by me. Will we see more units in the game? So right now we have the Missile Defender, the Marine, the Aprims, and a few more tanks. Will we see more units in the future? Oh yeah, so um, the, the current factions this whole game is basically a prototype. So, turns out making RTS, making games, is pretty pretty darn difficult. So we're not where we want to be. We have a vision for this game in the future, and I'll get to your question here in a second. Um, uh, so it turns out make, making RTS is pretty freaking hard. So we're starting with this prototype. We're we're seeing how far we can get with it, learning how to um, make the game properly and. Uh, getting all of our systems in. Uh, so I do, we will be adding a lot more units and things in the future. So yes, this is the answer to that question. And then I don't know how to say this guy's name. Uh, I think uh, Zumi. I think Zumi. Is this Sami? I don't know. All right. His question is, are the ratio of infantry vehicle building sizes going to remain the same? Uh, so yeah, it's a good question. So. Um, General rule of thumb, everything that you see and feel in this game is subject to change and will likely change in some way. I haven't really gotten my um, hand in the game uh, to the point where... Is that only blue? Aren't you blue too? Uh, I'm, I'm supposed to be magenta. On the map, you can see me magenta, and the enemy is blue. That but it is looks funny. all looks all blue. <laughs> I think it must, that, that, that's a bug. Nobody, everybody, ignore that. <clears throat> um, so the size is interesting. So um, on the one hand, you want it to be somewhat realistic. On the other hand, you want it to be readable. So I think right now, so there's a couple of things that factor into this. One is the camera zoom level, which is a massive discussion, big debate on how far it should be and how far are you allowed to pull out. And, and not so much zoom in, it's more like a funzy kind of detail thing. Um, I'm a personal fan of having, starting it at maximum zoom, and the zoom be right 
about that of classic CNC games that we're familiar with. Um, so, and then, there, then there's the size ratio between, between things. So, my personal emphasis is going to be um, uh, armored vehicles and and aircraft. I think are the are the coolest thing about this kind of genre. Not that infantry aren't cool, and I, I wouldn't purposely make infantry weak or anything, but um, I think that in general, uh, the the armored vehicles are more of a fan favorite. So, what we'll probably do is figure out the size we want a typical tank to be, and then base everything off of that. Um, do you think that the size is, is bad right now? Is that what you're saying? Nah. Seems to think it's good. It's not too far off. I think the airfield is very big, but I, I, I also like that it is so big, because in real life it is also very big, the size of yeah. the airfield. It was big in generals too. Not quite this long, I don't think. It was wider. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the planes? Do you like the planes in its current state, or do you want to fix the planes? They can be improved. They need to be. Mm, it's co that's a complicated question. Um, there's a lot of things I want to do with the planes, make them different, and also like the options for factions. Again, these are prototype factions, so um, in the future when we get to um, more finalized factions, I'm going to think of, think very hard about uh, what units are available for factions and what units aren't available. Uh, how those units behave. I mean, typical RTS stuff, right? But like, because right now there's a lot of overlap on our factions. So right now, I think that you and I has three tanks to choose from, and uh, initially they were pretty much the same. And what I want to do is make sure we have a good selection of tier choice and um, options between what you pick that they're, they're meaningful, with only moderate amounts of overlap. Um, and you consider faction theme and um, and as the primary driving force behind those decisions. But but the planes right now, like with most units, they're in a, they're in a work in progress right now. We're actually. Well, that's not important. So, the work in progress. Um, yeah. Thank you for the following. Fellow gamers, thank you for the following. Um, yeah. Um, did What strategy games did you play which inspired you to make this game here? Oh, gosh. So, what I've played, so mostly I've played Command and Conquer games and StarCraft. Now, there's just this, there's like a stigma between these two games, these two gamers, I feel like. Um, and CNC are like StarCraft's dumb, and StarCraft players are like no CNC's dumb. Um, and I grew up playing both of these genres, or both of these uh, franchises. I've also played other RTS, but not nearly as much. Did you play StarCraft competitive in uh, multiplayer, or you just spammed the campaign? Oh, I played. I played multiplayer. I mean, multiplayer. RTS for me is all about multiplayer, but I did not play competitively. I wasn't like a pro gamer or anything. Um, so you, you know, just uh, played for fun? Yeah, it was just for fun. I, I, I would say I'm a little bit above the average skill, but not by much. Uh, I was probably like, depending on what, what, um, uh, depending on what uh, game mode it was, I was right around the platinum or diamond area in StarCraft. Um, so I was I was decent, but not not like a really good, a really really great player. But I but I play, you know. Um, my first RTS was. What was my first RTS? I think it was. I think it was actually StarCraft. Starcraft and then I. Yeah. yeah, I think it was StarCraft 1, yeah. Um, I went to a friend's house to play it. Um, did we increase the building limit? Or the unit limit selection? Um, I think it went oh. from 500 to 510. Huh? Wait, how many units can you select at one time? Uh, I can select a lot of units at the same time. Uh, let me check that out. Just bo box that attacking force that you have. Yeah, will do. All selected. Huh, okay, yeah. Good. A while ago we had like a limit on that. Anyway, so, so uh, StarCraft 1 was my first game, then I played 
Um, what was next? Red Alert One. Red Alert One, I think. And then I, I didn't actually own these games, and I eventually would own StarCraft and, and Red Alert Two. Then Yuri's Revenge. Then Generals came out, um, and CNC Three. The expansion to both of those games, uh, Generals and CNC Three. Uh, and then, what did I get next? StarCraft Two, and which I thought I thought it was all over then. I thought, I thought RTS was done when StarCraft Two came out, but I was wrong. Um, and I have all the expansions to StarCraft Two, and then I did I did not I, I played the beta of Red Alert Three, but didn't didn't stick around with it. Um, and I played the beta for CNC Four, but didn't stick around for that one. Um, and that's. That's the latest CNC game I've played. Yeah, my latest uh, my latest CNC game was uh, CNC uh, Zero Hour, and then I stopped. I never uh, get a touch on the other CNC titles. So Zero C Zero Hour was the uh, Zero Hour was the last title for me. Yeah, I think I think that I think that um, CNC CNC Three was was pretty good. I, I think Generals is better, um, but Generals is it's just older and it, it's not. It's a, it's a bit rough around the edges compared to other games, but CNC3 also had bugs as well. And I remember playing with like, uh, what, was the, what was that cyborg team? Not the Black Hand, what was that team? Yeah, I forget the name of the team. There was a cyborg team for Kane, uh, for Nod, and I remember having this really frustrating moment, these moments where I would use these these Enlightened units, and they wouldn't, they had an EMP ability, but they wouldn't launch it sometimes whenever you activated it. So there were these, there were these like micro bugs that would that would screw up your play oh God. And things like that yeah so things like that really really kind of messed up in ea and every every cnc fan on the planet knows this that basically ea only sort of cares about the franchise they don't really care as much as like the um the community does which is really unfortunate so i think that they and then the most recent title cnc 2013 as we know it uh pretty much dominating these guys right now uh, CNC 2013 had like um, had a interesting start and then didn't seem to pan out very well. EA said that the problem was that the uh, community wasn't satisfied. But I don't believe that excuse. I don't. I don't, that, don't, I don't believe it as well. I think that's all. Yeah, right. that's that's kind of ridiculous. That it's kind of sad that they're that they're trying to like toss off the responsibility on the players like it was somehow their fault. Um, so anyway. That, that to me looks like a situation where I remember participating in the beta or the alpha for that game and talking to people on the forums. I talked to the director of the game on the forums and I just sensed that there was something was, was wrong. I, I don't know what it was, but it didn't seem to have the smoothest development. So it, unfortunately, the, uh, the fans suffered and the, the franchise was canned because of it. So anyway, that's what happened there. Um, yeah. We have so, another question of uh, yeah, let's Subi. Look at that. I think so he Sark said, I think StarCraft is more spammy. CNC is less spammy. When it comes to numbers of units on the field, any rate, what do you think is better? Uh, so, uh, let, let me address your question here in a second. That, that's a really, like, um, that's a very like difficult thing to, to answer. So about StarCraft and, and CNC, I think that both of the both games are spammy. So any when you have a game, I think that. Um, I think that StarCraft is a more refined RTS at this point because it is it has had a lot of attention in the esports scene. And CNC has not the CNC formula and the generals formula has not had the same opportunity that StarCraft has. Uh, so basically and, and, and if when when CNC when a CNC formula type game it's the same chance, we're going to see a refinement of the same way that StarCraft has. So, when someone says spammy, um, what I think is like, if you remember in CNC3, um, people would shift click up like 90 tanks, right? So they would build a war factory, they'd queue up like 100 tanks and let it go. Like that, that to me is very spammy, right? You're not thinking about what you're building with your with your credits. Part of that is due to the, due to the fact that you congratulations on your victory. Part of that is to do with the fact that um, that uh, can you beat the hardest AI? Uh, no, I suffer a lot, but I will. Tr I will try it. 
But you just dominated that AI. You were like destroying them. Yeah, but it's a huge gap between the um, between the hard and the very hard AI. By the way, there's a typo. It says hard very and not very hard. There's a funny yep. typo in it. You're right. <laughs> Looks well, funny. <laughs> no pain, no gain. Try the hard AI if you want. Anyway, um, where was I? So, uh, CNC hasn't had the same chance to shine, basically, as StarCraft has uh, due to EA's policies on their game. Um, kind of got off topic here, though. Spammy, right? So, okay, so when you when you shift click up 100 units in a War Factory, that to me is spam. So, um, it, it, it says, and part of that is due to the fact that when you buy a unit in, in, um, in Command and Conquer, the, the time it takes to build is how long, or, or the duration of credits being subtracted from your, from, your, from your wallet. So, if I build a Predator tank from CMC3, and it caught, what was the cost of that? I think 1,100, 1100 credits. Over the 10 or so seconds that it takes to build the tank, I would lose that credits. Generals in StarCraft do it differently. <clears throat> when you click the unit or, or, or place the structure, the total amount is deducted from your wallet immediately, which means you have to make better decisions on when you buy the unit and how much you buy. Because if you queue up multiple units, then it will, um, you deduct that full amount. Um, so typically speaking, um, it seems it seems like that forces you to think about your purchases a little bit a little bit um, more. Now, both both RTS are big on big armies. So, in StarCraft and in Command and Conquer, from what I've seen, I think I think StarCraft has more um, has larger armies in general, and I think it's due to the nature of the counter system. So, if you build too many of one unit in Command and Conquer, then uh, you get this situation where you can just be countered by another unit type. That's a problem. We got rid of those destroyed buildings too. I think that's making it hard to build. Another thing I remember too is if you try to build it on top of those you have selected, it won't let you do that. Yeah. Um, another question I have to you is: um, so in this current studio, Arian Studio, how many mm -hmm. developers are there? How big is the team? How uh, how is your uh, experience looking? with developing games. Do you uh, have... Yeah, let, let me answer that later. I'm still, I'm still on this question this guy asked here. Oh, I got, I'm, I got a lot I'm to sorry. Say about this. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's I'm fine. sorry. That's fine. He, asked a really, he asked a very complex question. It might, it might sound simple to him, but there's actually a lot of, um, a, a lot of uh, nuance here that, that I enjoy. So, so yeah, it, it is interesting. Uh, Zombie. I don't know how to say your name. It's Z-S-0-M-I-E. I'm going to call you Zombie from now on. So it is interesting. So, so those kinds of, of, dis, of differences in the games can make a big impact on how the game is played. Now, I prefer, I prefer to have the upfront cost. What I'm not sure about is the upfront cost on queued units. See how this gets very granular? It goes like infinitely complicated. So I don't like it whenever I can shift to a thousand units and forget about it. That to me is mindless. Placing the unit um, into the war factory to be built, having the full deduction. So if I have a thousand credits, and I want to. I, I, and a tank costs one thousand, and a, a rifle infantry costs two hundred. With the pay-as-you-go system, as they say, you can queue up both simultaneously. But with the pay-up-front system, you have to choose one. That's a more interesting decision to make as a player, I think. Which one do I want to choose, right? So um, that's kind of where my brain goes with that. But there's, there's more to it than that. So what if, what if the War Factory dies? Or it gets what if, what if it dies and a unit is being built? Do you get the money back? Uh, should you? Should, do you get half the value or do you get none of the money back? I'm not really sure what the best answer for that is. I tend to lean towards giving the money back. Because the penalty is you lost the War Factory and you don't get the unit and you're delayed. That, that is, seems like a strong enough penalty against the player. But some games will, will not refund you the money, or refund you part of the money if you cancel a unit. So it depends on which RTS you're looking at. Um, so, uh, and then one more general statement I want to say <clears throat> with uh, amount of units on the field, uh, StarCraft and CNC, I think that large armies is exciting. I think it's fun to have a lot of units. Uh, I don't think it's a good 
I don't think it's a good thing to have a lot of units quickly. So right now he has a ton of, of, of rocket dudes. There's there's some problems with our game right now, and we're gonna address this. Um, it looks like that it, it has to do with I, I see right here. I didn't notice this before, but he can have multiple trucks gathering ore, which is which is not a good not a good idea. So we'll have to limit that. Um, and what I would like to see is a game where you have a low amount of units, a low amount of units initially, and we want to build up to have the climax of a fight. So the general, the general idea of a round, if it goes through all of the motions, is you, it's a very tactical and intimate. And what do I build to to make my early game decisions become a reality? And then it's going to transition into as armies get larger, the stakes get higher, uh, and the the individual, the individual unit, like a rocket soldier or a rifle guy or a single tank, doesn't matter as much. But the individual specialty units will matter more as the the unit counts get higher. So instead of having one tank and three infantry, it's thirty tanks. But then your special your specialty units, like an aircraft or an artillery piece or uh, some kind of utility unit, will become the replacement for the early game units that. In terms of emphasis of individual units, does that make sense? I kind of went all over the place there, but I think I got the point across. I hope I did. Okay, so next question. Uh, let's see. Mm. And then to answer his question, which way do I think is better? It is all. It is all a lot of. It just really depends on what the surrounding systems are, and it depends on um, what your. It, 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 to me, it comes down to what are the surrounding systems. So, I try to make what I consider the objectively correct decision, uh, and whether or not it's a mistake, I, I could make a mistake on that. I don't, I don't know, but I think that I've got a pretty good handle on what what we want to do. I could be wrong, though. I'm not afraid of admitting when I'm wrong. Uh, so, hopefully, if I if there's a situation where I am wrong, I'm just I don't care, and, and I'll I'll just say, yep, I was wrong. Let's change it. So, anyway. Um, so the answer to your question is, it depends. That was a long way of saying that. Okay, so, I'll read through the chat here. Okay, so he agrees. Point. Alright, so what was your question, Clemens? Uh, my question was, uh, how many people do work at Rain Studio, so the developer team of this game, and how uh, is your experience of making strategy games, how much experience do you as a team have with making these games? Yeah, before, honestly, before um, making this game, I don't think we have any experience making a strategy game. Now, I have experience developing games. <coughs> I've worked at some various studios, some mobile studios. I worked at a training developer software thing. I, I make an indie game on the side that's not related to RTS at all. I actually play a wide variety of games. Um, kind of obsessed with games, <laughs> and RTS is one of, is one of those genres that I'm that I'm really. Ex it's probably one of my favorite genres. Uh, so that's kind of our ex my personal experience. I don't think that anyone else has any experience on the team, like historically. Uh, but I came onto this game. Um, what was it? A couple. Let's see. What was? What is the month? It's May. Let's see. Maybe February. So that's been four months or so. Uh, and some of the people have been working on it for a lot longer than I have, so... Um, amount of developers, we are a really microscopic team, to be 100% honest. We've got maybe, let's see, we got people who work on it the most consistently, or kind of, we'll kind of say core members of the team. Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, maybe five people, I would say. Which is not enough people to make an RTS. That's an insanely low amount of people. <laughs> By the way, just so we're clear, <laughs> um, RTS require a lot of people and resources to make uh, yeah. properly. So, <laughs> so it's been told to me that um, you have to be kind of brain damaged to want to work in games. And it's true <laughs> to to uh, basically go through impossible odds. So right you're now you're struggling here. Yeah, so right now we have the UNI. Um, what is the, what are the plans for the feature, uh, future to uh, release? Um, how many factions are there? Um, how many factions do you want to add to the game? 
Oh man, that's, that's a really awesome question. I'm not ready to say the amount yet, um, but I just want to emphasize that the, the current factions you see are basically prototypes. So we kind of made up some factions, like, all right, this is what we're going to start with. We're going to try to get down the basis of RTS. There's a lot of, and the reason why is because there's a lot of the producer. Yeah, the producer. Yeah, he's kind of a clown. I see you in the chat, Michael. A clown. <laughs> Praise the producer. Yeah, Michael's in the chat trying to get me to talk about him. Um, anyway, uh, so the, the current factions are prototypes. Uh, so th there's a lot of kind of functionality we don't have in the game yet. So, for example, I'm really interested in adding some some tactical elements to the game that are that are that I don't think are in CNC games. They're in other kind of RTS and kind of RTT games, but they're not. Um, yeah, we gotta fix that. That oh my gosh, we gotta fix that. Uh, the amount of ore trucks you put on there that should be limited by one. <laughs> but that's a that's a problem. I didn't realize I could do that. I assumed that it was blocked off, but it's not. Um, I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. We need to. We need to that down. It's the salami, salami strategy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's going to get patched out. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, uh, what was the question? How many factions? Yes, we, I'm not ready to say how many we're going to make yet. Um, but but it's safe to say that you and I is not the only faction. Absolutely, yeah. That's safe to say. Yeah, yeah that's definitely safe to say. I really uh, like the um, focus on this game with um, ground units and um, air units, but I also heard and saw in the demo and in the alpha that there are going to be ships. What is your uh, thought process about the ships? What do you think about the ships? Um, how do you going to implement them into the gameplay? Okay, so so Navy is in a bit of a weird state right now for us. We're, we're, I think we're a bit divided internally how we're going to do Navy. Um, so Navy... Well, well, I forget what, what my reasons were. I was, we had a long conversation about this, and I forget how the conversation went exactly. Um, <clears throat> so I don't think that adding lots, uh, always adding more is not always a good thing. Um, I think that what I'd like to do, and this may change, so don't quote me on this, is I think that I want to have Navy there kind of in presence, but not necessarily like um, Red Alert 3, Red Alert 2, um, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about Navy, to be honest. Um, I, I don't know yet. I, I can't answer that question yet. I, okay. I had an idea of, of having... Um, we're, we're tossing around the idea of having Navy be something along the lines of a super weapon. Now, when you think super weapon, you think like a nuclear missile, like an ion can or something like that. That's not what I mean exactly. But, so let's say, for example, you it, it kind of think of Navy as like a tech, like a tech option. So as I'm going through my tech tree, which by the way, the tech trees are not finished yet. I have uh, improved ideas for tech trees eventually. Um, so think of, think of like choosing Navy as like a tech option. So I'm, I go War Factory, Barracks, Airfield, this and that, and, that, and it's like, okay, here's a Navy control building or something like that. Or Naval Yard that, you, that we have like in the water and you can build, you can, you can beckon a Naval unit, right? So let's say i choose the destroyer and if you think about okay the problem with navy here i remember i remember the problem with navy the problem with navy is that um you have to have a really cartoony game to have navy function like a something like a tank or an aircraft there's a certain level of like of like power and size that that is an expectation in this kind of game when you have a naval vessel now red alert 3 can pull this off really well because it's, it's kind of a cartoony game, but our game's not very cartoony. And a navy, a navy vessel is a massive, massive thing, right? The destroyer is is many times larger than a tank, and to have a little destroyer looks kind of odd about um, in in the game. And then also when you have when you have the then you have this weird like limbo state where um, you have a weird limbo state where if you make the vessel large, it you want it to move in a way that's, that is at least somewhat realistic, then it becomes annoying to control because it's so cumbersome and slow, right? So Because yeah. a lot of liberties are taken in this kind of game. You know, tanks and Humvees and stuff don't move exactly like real life because you, you want them to be responsive to the, to the player's controls. That's kind of priority one, making sure that they don't... Um, 
making sure that units don't are not annoying to control. So Navy falls in this weird kind of like limbo state between those two things. So with that in mind, I thought, well, why don't we treat Navy like a super weapon? So what I was thinking is something like, all right, you've got um, so so you build your Navy vessel. Uh, like you, you build your navy structure, and it's like, do I want to choose the aircraft carrier, or do I want to choose the destroyer? So if I choose the aircraft carrier, I get some kind of ability that can be launched from the aircraft carrier. I can use it every five minutes. But if I choose the destroyer, then I can use like a, like an like an arch, like a a strike every two minutes or something quicker, and it becomes like a strategical decision. So technically, navy's in the game, but it's not like a functioning unit. But the, the theme is very strong, and the, the presence it, it feels like maybe in the game. So that's where my brain is right now. That's where my mind is right now. I'm thinking about that sort of thing. But I don't really know for sure. Okay, so. all right. But it was a very good answer for my question. Really uh, yeah. going into detail there. I really like that. Okay, so what? Uh, let's talk about the game. So um, in which year are we in this game? So we have a little crisis here, I read. And the ore and the oil are our only resources. So, what's the story of this game? Is there a story? I didn't write it. I don't really know exactly what the, more than what you guys. I haven't really been focusing on the story very much right now. Uh, so that would be a, a more of a micro question. Uh, the story is probably kind of placeholder right now. Uh, so, because um, what we want, we we want our main focus to be multiplayer. And and I was just we were actually discussing this last night. I was talking with Avi about this. Uh, Yesterday, I don't know if Michael's heard this yet or not, but um, the problem. So RTS is kind of a weird. Thank you for uh, the following. Position. Do the follower. Cool. Oh, before I answer that, um, Zoomy. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. But that's basically what I was, what I was saying. So I, I'm kind of conflicted on Navy. So I thought there would be like a, like a, as I said, I thought there would be like a good kind of side. Uh, a way to get it in there, but not in the exact same way people think about it, but it's still in there, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see in the future. But anyway, so the story. Come on, I'm getting some water. I'm talking a lot. I always do that. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> uh, so the story. Um, RTS is weird. I don't think that RTS is a good, is, a, is, is typically a good storytelling medium. Uh, typically, a story, had, you have your main characters, and you want to get emotionally involved in some way. Um, and most of RTS is this kind of bird's eye view thing where you don't really care about any of the units, right? So, and there's been some attempts over the years. So CNC has like Tanya, but there's not really anything compelling about this, most of the CNC character. Uh, basically, the most interesting character in this Command and Conquer is Kane, because he's mysterious and dark and kind of weird and interesting. Uh, now, StarCraft and with Blizzard, what they do is they, they say, all right, we can't tell a good story. Well, we can't tell a compelling story about characters and emotion and stuff from a bird's eye view. So they add a lot of cinematics and stuff. So you have like between missions, you walk around a ship or whatever, or whatever it is, and you talk to people by clicking on them and get information about stuff. But it's not really RTS, right? It's just some other. It's like a. It's RTS attached to the cinematic thing. Which is totally fine. That, that's, that's, a, that's a viable way to do it. Um, for us, though, and for me especially, like, I'm really hyper focused on on, on multiplayer. I think that um, RTS is at its core a competitive genre. It kind of derives from chess, which is about player versus player, mind versus mind, and and the the motif is war. So you really can't get away from that this yearning to want to fight other people. Having said that, though, I'm, I'm not inherently against campaign or mission content. That's just where I think that the that the RTS strength lies, and it's it's also easier to build um, up a large uh, multiplayer kind of uh, what's the word, what's the word I'm looking for a multiplayer platform, and and then begin to have a business model around that than it is to make a, uh, a single player campaign as the initial starting point. So with when you make a single player campaign, there's a lot of expectations. You have all this voice hacking, you've got cinematics, you've got to have missions and writing and, 
It's expensive, right? But the multiplayer is is the unit functionality and the platform to fight other players. That's what it is. So I think but the expense with the multiplayer, of course, is the server stuff. It, server stuff is complicated and expensive, and I don't understand the first thing about it. But um, that's where you get your long-term engagement. People will play a campaign once or twice. People will play multiplayer forever, right? So there, there's a big difference to me in that, and that's that's kind of where my thoughts are about that. What was your original question, though? I think you're in trouble in your game, by the way. Yeah, I'm losing right now because I ran out of cash. As you can see right now, I have uh, 2,000 cash, which I will save for the uh, oil, uh, for the ore, I mean. But I cannot build up the ore because I lost. <laughs> yeah, we need, we need to change the ore. I'm going to write that down right now. There's also a plane which one-shots two buildings. Yeah. That's a huge problem. <laughs> Might be a problem as well. But it was a good, a good attempt against the very hot area, I think. Sure. Um, let's see. And yeah, uh, Quantovi, the game evolved uh, since the last time. So I think the graphics improved a lot since the last uh, beta release. Since the last beta version. I think you worked a lot on the graphics here. Yeah, um, we, we probably did. Like, it's it's hard to see. Um, when, when you're when you're what when you're like looking at the game, like every day, it's really hard to know what's changing unless people tell you like specifically, like, hey, look at this thing I changed specifically. Um, i but it, it, that, that's, that's a Michael question. I'm not really sure. <laughs> I guess they if they look better than they they look better. So that's good. Oh, you lost your dozer. Right, let's, check, let's check the chat real quick. Yeah. The fighters are units like in generals or a skill like an act of aggression. I don't know what that means. Uh, the the they fighters are, the fighters are aircraft. units. The fighters, the planes are units uh, which you can use like in generals. Um, it's not like an act of aggression. Um, the fighters you can use like in generals and zero hours. So you have these planes. You can hotkey them. You can select them and you can move them um, with your own order. They are not like a super weapon or so. They are normal units in the game, the planes. I think I lost that. How do you call them? You build an airfield and then you build the planes on them. I mean, he, I think he means how do you, like, how do you say what, what they call it. So, yeah, you, you call them a jet. If you say a jet, it's more clear. A fighter is a... You can say, like, a fighter jet. That's a thing. Uh, but when you say fighter, it's, like, a really general term. So... A fighter could be a person. Yeah. So for yeah. all who, for all who tuned in, thank you for tuning in. Hello to 20 viewers. And you are right now watching Warzone Middle East. And we are here in chat with the developers themselves. And we are right now watching me getting destroyed by a very hard AI. Or a hard very AI. Hard very AI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got a little typo we gotta fix. If you have any questions for the developers, please ask them here in the chat and we will try to answer them as good as we can. Yeah, Mish Mark Mish of Wisdom failed. has some words of wisdom by asking if CNC is getting his face stomped in and the answer to that question is yes. His face has been stomped. Has been stomped. Yeah, CNC has getting his face stomped in by EA. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I better introduce myself. So, again, I'm Jonathan. This is... Um, I'm uh, one of the developers in the game, so working on the design side of things. Hey, Jonathan, look at the spirit buck. I have a repair button here in the. Yeah, that's a cool <laughs> little feature. Yeah, I've seen that problem before. We had a we had a bug one time, and me laugh where like the the repair icon was like half the size of the screen. It was really holy funny. shit. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting whenever whenever you. Uh, <laughs> Every make a game, there's basically infinite bugs, and every time you fix one bug, you get two more bugs. So it's just it's a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. So so one of the main things we want to do is um, so so Mark uh, Generals is obviously a pretty big inspiration for this, um, and and what everything you're seeing here is very is very prototype esque. So you can expect a lot of changes across every possible facet you can think of in this game uh, as we as we advance forward and um, uh, 
Yeah, so. If you guys have specific questions, you guys can ask whenever you want. Otherwise, we're just going to keep... I'm just going to keep rambling about RTS. Uh, so what... What I'd like to do is... So we'll definitely be heavily inspired by Generals. Uh, I don't think Generals is the perfect RTS, but I think that it's a really good... It's a really good RTS because it, it, it took a blend of... Of Command and Conquer and StarCraft elements, it was more leaning towards Command and Conquer, but they um, there's definitely uh, inspiration from from StarCraft as well. Uh, so Mark's question is, what are the resources in this game? We have ore, O R E, and oil. So yeah, which you can see oil. here right now on the screen, we have two next to each other. We have here on the right side the ore, and we have on the left side the oil. These are the two primary resources here in the game. Yeah, ore and oil. And right now our symbol's a, a dollar sign, we gotta change that, but we can't change it for coding reasons right now, so it'll have to be, it's a, actually a more involved fix than just uh, just changing the text, so we'll have to do that later. Um, so, Generals. So, so Generals is a really good RTS. Blend of StarCraft and Command and & Conquer, though more towards Command and & Conquer. Um, and, uh, I really like so, so the counter system in generals is, is a classic CNC counter system. It's it's what we call a hard counter system, um, and it loops on itself by infantry. So the, the the kind of the the if you notice in general style game or command and conquer style games, when a tank shoots an infantry, it doesn't really do much damage to the infantry, which is not not realistic at all. But you need to have that kind of unrealistic X like uh, moment there in the counter system, or else tanks would be beating everything in the game. So um, that's that's the obvious inspiration we have. Um, I like. I think that uh, having a multiplayer focused game with um, kind of modern, slightly futuristic military uh, is a pretty interesting motif. It's 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 very flexible. We can get a lot of things, a lot of interesting gameplay. Out of it. Did your did your game just freeze? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I was typing in the chat if um, Michael can post the okay. Discord so people gotcha, can join. Gotcha. Um, and, okay, so he has a question here. Hold on, I, I can only do one thing at a time because I'm a guy. Are there further ways of getting more resources or limited, are they limited per map? Right now, no. In the future, uh, there will be. So what Generals does is, so the way that StarCraft StarCraft never actually solves this. So what StarCraft does is they have a lot of resources on a map. More specifically, the resources last a long time. In, 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 in Command and & Conquer games, CNC3 especially, but in, in a little bit, little bit so generals, um, the, the resources dry up somewhat fast. In CNC3, you can just like inhale the resources. Like The more harvesters you have, the more resources you bring in. Generals, it's it's throttled by the fact that only one worker can drop off or gather resources at a time, uh, which I prefer that system. And StarCraft is the same thing, but they have StarCraft has one has one of the best systems because you have multiple resources resource nodes per expansion, and then you can have a granular approach to how much how many resource gatherers you have in, in a given base which has diminishing return as you fill it up. So that gives you a lot of flexibility on how how you increase your economic growth. Oh yeah, it's a little bug there, guys freaking out. If you click too fast sometimes, they, they kind of mess up. Yeah, I just noticed that. <laughs> yeah, he's acting kind of weird. But I, I've seen some bugs like that before. Uh, so StarCraft has, has a system where, where because, of, because of the nature of what I just described, StarCraft you have to decide when to build combat units, when to build resource units, and, and how much, and that sort of thing. Um, so, what was this question again? Oh yeah, so so right now the game you get out of re you run out of resources, then you're then you're in trouble. So what Generals does is they give you alternative alternative options to build more resources, kind of a, like just by owning certain structures. So you had the GLA black markets, the USA supply drop zones, and you had the Chinese hackers. This is actually a pretty smart thing because what happens is when you um, when you 
have a situation where players are out of resources, they get really scared. They don't want to leave their base because they're going to lose. So a play to, for a player to make a move, they have they typically have to have the assurance that there is there will be more resources that replace their resources uh, over time, right? So. Um, So what the supply drop zones, the black markets, and the and hackers do in general is, is they, they kind of solve that problem. So if you feel like that you're going to have a financial backing, you're going to make more aggressive moves. If you don't feel like you have that financial backing, you're going to play much more conservatively, and then the game's going to kind of get stale for, for a viewer or for the player. So that's, that's why having those kinds of alternative resource gathering mechanisms are actually pretty important. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, so I just, so what Mark said, I did read his second comment, but yeah, like, I, what what you said is what I like to do. Um, do we develop the game full-time, or do you have other jobs? We all have other jobs, but, um, except for, well, this, except for Michael, I think he does it full-time, uh, but, yeah, we have, we have other jobs, and, uh... Since when is the game in the, development? Uh, let's see, officially about two years ago, I'd say, is when Michael started out on things. He was, he was the original, and he had a small team, and I came on about, uh, let's see, four months ago, I said, and I started to challenge the design. There wasn't a counter system in the game. It was, it was pretty rough on the edge in terms of design. It's not there yet, for sure. There's definitely a lot of problems with the design right now. But as you might expect, the developing game is pretty complicated. So we've got like some organizational issues we're dealing with the project right now, trying to get everything, trying to get our ducks in a row basically to make sure we know what we're doing, um, and various other issues. So uh, it, it will come around slowly, but it's it's just not going to be. But but there is we we are you know still making making changes for everything. So but but about two years ago is to answer your question. I think Avi came on. Let's see, Avi was about. What six or seven months ago? I'm guessing. Michael, can you hear me? Is that right? And then, um, one second. Got a personal message here. Yep. Take okay. your time. It's nothing. It's nothing. Uh, so, and we've had a programmer who's been on since near the beginning, and then a second programmer who came on like about two months ago, who's working on some things, and we got we have some soft. What's like so like. Not developer, but like some soft help people in the past couple months too. Uh, that's kind of the timeline that we had. So when can we expect multiplayer? Is there a specific time set when we are going to see it, or um, do you say it's done when it's done? We take our time, even if it's uh, three months, six months. We take our time since it's, since it's finished, or do you um, have a specific time? Yet, when you can say, okay, then it's going to be up for sure, the multiplayer. Yeah, uh, it, so I don't know the exact time frame. That's not a question I can answer very well. You see that one rocket freaking out? That's funny. Uh, I would say I, the last the last thing I heard, they're working on it now. Um, and the last, the last time frame I heard was in a few months. So I think it's important to get out to the multiplayer as soon as possible, uh, even if it's in a really wonky state, and get people playing it and bug testing it as soon as possible. But but be aware that our first version is going to be pretty crappy, honestly. It's going to be not that good, uh, because it's our first time making a multiplayer game. Making a multiplayer game is pretty difficult, and um, um, yeah, so we got issues to do. Okay, nice. Um, I don't follow Zombie, what do you mean? Yeah, and what's he say? What's that guy's name? Combustible... Combustible Mon? Com combustible Mon. I think there's a lemon at the end. So Combustible Mon f says, finally we can play something else than StarCraft. Yeah, I love StarCraft, but I agree with him. I There is a... In my opinion, there is a... We all, we all think this. There is a gap in the RTS world right now. Um, 
where it, and it's it's shaped like generals or something like that, in my opinion. It doesn't exist. And I think that um, it would be really successful if we could if we could get that get that Thank lemon. you for the following the oh, combustible answer. lemon, I see it now. I got it. Combust a lemon. Combust a lemon? I don't know. You got a new follower, nice. Yeah, I actually, Zombie, I actually can't really contribute much to multiplayer, so it's, it's totally my skill set. It's a completely other beast that's not something I can understand, to be honest. Definitely a heavy programmer sort of thing. Um, Why are my anyway, planes, yeah, so, Why are my planes yeah, bugging? Oh, uh, really? Yeah, that's, I don't know. I, I had, the, the planes were kind of rushed before the demo out. We were a little bit late on our deadline, and, um... I guess they are. Good question. <laughs> I don't know. I have to ask. It's like they're taking off slowly. That one spun around. Yeah, it's taking off. It's just not taking off at the same time. Oh, nice. Perfect. Yeah, we'll, we'll add it to the bug list. The ever growing bug list. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the early state of the game, so bugs are to be expected. By the way, if you play the game and you see any bugs, please. Uh, Post them in the Discord channel of the developers. Yep, you can that's good. find uh, the the link. Somehow it's not my uh, copy copy system anymore. If someone can post the link to the Discord, that would be appreciated. There you can post the uh, um, the bugs, and the developers are adding it to the list and will fix it very soon in the next or the following version. They are working pretty hard on that. So Mark of Wisdom asks, are the benefits to rushing versus teching up and building a substantial army, such as things in zero hour like no eco builds where you rush out units and blitz the enemy so they can get going? Uh, so I like, I, so yes, I, I, I want to build in rushing as a tactic. I want I want to discourage all ends. I don't like the idea of an all in. It's this basically it's a coin flip. If the all in works, you win. If the all in doesn't work, you lose. That to me is not. I'm not a hundred percent excited about that. Uh, so, and it might be impossible to avoid. To be a hundred percent honest, I don't actually know. So, what I would like to do is figure out a way so that um, you know you can. We, we want a back and forth experience. We want to have decisions made at all points of the game. Uh, so. The answer to your question, yes, but I'm I'm a bit hesitant on the all-in stuff. Uh, I could be wrong about that. I might change my opinion on that, but but right now that's kind of where I where I'm thinking. Is he going through the? Oh, he's in the environment. That's kind of weird. It's interesting. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? It is helpful for bug testing. You're right. Also, hello to 15 viewers. Thank you for tuning in. Thank, also, yeah, thank you, Vox, for posting the link. Yeah. And also, hello. Yeah, hello, Salami. Salami is the community manager, for those who don't know. He manages communities. Is the total view amount of people that see it or amount of like unique people who see your stream? Um, I think the only thing which matters is the red person button, 15 viewers, the rest does not matter. Uh, 2,000, maybe 2,000 clicks, but I don't, I would not count on that. Maybe 2,000 is the maximum number of views on my channel. I'm not exactly sure. Um, uh, yeah, so, so what, it, so the, so static defense is where I would go. I, that's kind of weird. Having a unit that can't move far, I, I understand the thinking, but it seems like a pretty artificial fix to that sort of problem. Um, so what it will be? So what it will be is if you're going to stop a rush, it's going to be about what uh, what units you build, where you place your defense, and how you build your base. That those are the three most important elements. Because as we know, if you build, if you if, if you have three structures uh, and one defense structure, depending on how you place that defense structure, can be a pretty important element in how you place your units. So if you go eco build, the general the general <coughs> um, 
thing I want to do is is I want to look at all right. You start with a base, and almost everyone's going to put down a resource center in the beginning. But then, and then, and then, well, there's actually two things that you're going to do. We'll probably have capturable resource nodes by infantry, kind of like the oil derricks or the uh, Tiberium spikes in CNC three. So the way it's, it's going to function is your first decision is going to be: Do I go infantry to take to take these capturable points? Uh, or do I take a resource node? And that would be your first decision. Second decision is going to be, the second big decision you make is going to be, do I do I take control of the of parts of the map, or do I aggress against my opponent, right? And this third decision you're going to make is probably going to be based off the result of the second decision. So if your if your map control is successful, then you're probably either going to take control of more map or be aggressive. If your aggression is successful, you're going to either continue the aggression or take control of the map. Um, and then the, the following thing is going to be either a, a continued aggression or continued map control. That's, that's what it basically comes down to. It's either aggression or map control. And when I say map control, that, that either take, means taking points of interest or that means taking um, resources in some way. So. Um, does that answer the question? Let's find out. Yeah, that was Mark Wiss. I think I answered the question, so... Yeah, uh, the Hunter wants to know, what engine is this running on? It's Unity. It's Unity. Yeah. Unity has become a pretty fierce engine. We, we had... I mean, this is crazy. We, we I think that Avi told me recently that we had 600 units in play with, with no... with no slowdown, which is actually pretty good. I didn't expect it to be that strong. I had this thought that, that once we got further into our vision with the game, we had to rebuild the game in a different, in a different engine, but I could be wrong about that. I think that, that what's that game that came out recently? There was the, uh, the Deserts of Karak. That's a Unity game too, and it looks, it looks amazing. So, you, and then by the time that we get our uh, crap together in this game in the future, you know, we might be looking at um, just sticking with Unity the whole time. Unity will be only improve over, over time. Where's your company based? Um, I heard it's in Israel. We're all over the place. We got some guys in Israel. We got some guys in the U.S. We got a, a guy in Indonesia, and those are the core developers. So, Zombie so asks if we can join the development team. Uh, it depends on your skill set, and it depends. And I don't, I don't actually know. My, my, I think right now we've hit a capacity of developers. We're, we're, we want to keep the team small right now, but anything's possible in the future. To add, uh, to add to that, um, just join the Discord server of the developers and um, post your feedback. Be active. Be, um, yeah, be part of the team and um, future, uh, future tells and just be part of the team there in the. Discord server. Yeah. Um, 900 units? Wow, that's crazy. I didn't realize. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I could even build more, but the fewer account were dropping, uh, was dropping, so I decided to end the game there. I could have even gone for 2,000 units, I think. I wonder how they function in fights, though. Because I, I know that it puts a lot of shit in the CPU, so all the calculations of a unit and um, it's a bunch of math calculations. You get units that move, they collide, they shoot, they turn, they pivot. All that is is CPU calculations going on. So I don't know. Um, okay, we, we got a question here from Lemon. Do the attacks have a chance to miss, or are the attacks 100% guaranteed to hit? You will notice that some attacks miss. That's a, that is a bug. So um, unless you are counting things like MRLS, where they aim against the ground, this is a this is a complicated uh, situation in, in RTS. Uh, so in general, my philosophy is: um, Are you start? Are you starting with a ton of resources? No wonder you have so many resources. You're starting with like a million resources. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying against the very hard AI. Hard very. Um, okay, tons of right. resources. 
be hard bury AI. <laughs> oh gosh, we gotta fix that. <laughs> um, hard bury indeed. Um, what was I saying? I have a one track mind. Zoom time. What do you say? Oh yeah. Okay. So the missed chance. So um, so my general philosophy is I don't like random occurrences. So if you are in, if you're playing in a tournament and you've got cash on the line. And then a pivotal moment happens in the battle where your unit misses and theirs doesn't because of some kind of arbitrary chance. That can be a very frustrating experience. So, um, but we, you want variation. You want variation, right? So, for example, let's say, so here's an example. So, our MRLS, they launch the rockets and then they land on the ground. And right now they land in kind of like a radius randomly. What I will do in the future is make them land in a pattern, right? So it has this sense of, of a barrage, and it may look random, but it's not going to actually be random. So a player who's dedicated will be able to learn the patterns of a, of a unit like that and understand the nuances. It doesn't mean that you're going to play a million times better suddenly, but it means that it's learnable and understandable. So that's, that's the general... Uh, sense of that thing. Um, so StarCraft says, alright, StarCraft says um, when you shoot uphill, as long as you can see uphill, you can shoot uphill, you never miss. Other games have a missed chance going uphill. That was how StarCraft 1 worked. So, oh, I need to highlight the question so I know what I'm, what I'm, at, what I'm answering. Um, what I would probably do is something like if you're up on uh, elevation, you get a range advantage, <clears throat> but the but the shots aren't actually missing. Uh, so that system's not that system's not in the game yet, but that's the sort of thing that you know that we're thinking about. Um, so that's the answer to that question. Let's read through some more of the chat. It's, I got some water. I'm going through my water pretty fast. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Eight hundred and ninety units. Great. I can't read that language. Uh, we, we discussed naval combat earlier, Lemon. Uh, basically, the idea is that we're, 100, we're not 100% sure about it. Navy, Navy's in a weird spot right now. Um, I think Navy's kind of weird for RTS in general, uh, especially the kind of RTS that we're making. So <clears throat> the reason why is because there's a, you either have chibi Navy units that move around like little, like little vehicles, or you have big Navy units that, that move slow. When they move slow, it becomes arduous and kind of kind of annoying. So the idea that I'm currently tossing around my, my around my mind is kind of like a super weapon, not like a nuke necessarily, but it's kind of like you build a navy structure and you call a certain naval unit into like to dock near the battle. So for example, it's like, do I choose the aircraft carrier or do I choose the destroyer? The aircraft carrier gives me this ability, I can use it for five minutes, and then the destroyer gives me this other ability, I can use it for two minutes or something like that. So that's kind of where we're thinking, what we're thinking right now, but it's subject to change. So I don't. So the short version is, maybe I don't know yet. Uh, let's see. Let's see next. The function. By the way, hello to sixteen viewers and welcome to the stream. You're right now watching Warzone Middle East um, stream with the developers, and this is beta version zero point eight point two. So Vox says, a uh, special kind of tank shell that, that can one hit kill, but it has a low chance. And again, this goes back to the random, the random chance thing. You know, let's say you have, you have each, you and your opponent both have two tanks and two infantry. Okay, his tanks get the, get the coin flip right. He kills both your infantry in one hit, and you can't do that to him. So because of the dice roll, you're at a disadvantage because of the way that the random chance happened. I'm not a fan of that, so I probably won't be doing something like that. Okay, let's see. Uh, what do you do about the uh, unit ready thing? Because it's really getting on my nerves. <laughs> I agree. I want. I don't like it. I'm going to remove it. So there, keep in mind, I, I came on this project late. Uh, the things that I want to add to the game and change are, are not completely in the game yet. There's a lot of artifacts in the game right now that I did, had no decision over. So, so be patient as I go through the game and change things and remove things and modify things um, but it will be a slow process because it's just making games is hard so it, it will take a while uh, okay, so fair enough 
we have good. a question here from I can't even pronounce this anonymous anonymous Titan one three three. So Titan says, "Are you planning on adding a crazy unit for each faction, such as the Overlord tanks and generals?" I'm going to extend that question and, and ask, "What about hero units or commando units?" So let's define our terms. So he calls a crazy unit, which is like a really powerful unit, but you can make more than one of these units, like the Overlord tank or something like that. Um, Will I add them to each faction? No. Will we add them to factions in general, or a little bit? Yes. So, when it comes to faction design on the crazy units, as he calls them, um, having a crazy unit is a unique feature. Not having a crazy unit is also a unique feature. So, it will be interesting to add a couple of units like that, but not every faction have access to it. It's interesting when you have asymmetrical faction. That, that's my primary concern. How can we make them themed interesting and different? Yeah, that's just crazy. So the, the, the economy in our game is out of control right now. You have like a million tanks on screen. <laughs> 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 I wrote that down. We have to fix that. It's getting a little ridiculous. <laughs> um, the next version of the build is going to have way less stuff going on. It, it builds up too quickly. Um, anyway, so so... There will be some crazy units, but not a lot. And and having a crazy unit will be interesting to, um, for 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 uh, faction in general. Uh, commandos and heroes. A commando is a unit like Colonel Burton or Tanya or whatever, where you can only have one, and they're kind of like a specialty kind of unit that can that can kill thing certain things very quickly, or like Black Lotus or what was that guy from GLA, Jamal or something like that. Uh, John Kill. What was his name? Jamin Kell. Jamin Kell. Yeah, that's right. Jamal, or that looks like a Spanish name or something. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, it's been a while, okay? Yeah. Um, anyway, so, again, if, if, if every unit has a commando unit, then the commando unit is less special. If only Serp, or did I say unit? If every faction has a commando unit, then it, it's, it's less special. If every... If only a couple of factions have the Jamal and Burton. Uh, what a jerk. <laughs> Keep them on, it, Burton. It's not, it's not Jamal <laughs> Kel. <laughs> Making fun of me. Anyway, so, if, if every, so what I want to do is have certain factions that have a, um, have a command and certain ones don't. Certain ones have hero units, certain ones don't. A hero unit would be like a mothership, like a really powerful unit you only have one of. So, for example, like in CNC3, you had like the uh, the Redeemer and the, the giant GDI Harvester thing, the Scrin alien thing. Um, yeah. So, so your faction might have this the the crazy units that he said are. Your faction might have a commando. It might have the hero unit. It might not have any of that stuff. So, um, it just depends on what how we decide to design a faction, that sort of thing. Uh, let's see where they at. There's that. All right, I'm pretty late on the other thing here. Uh, Fair X one multiplayer is not in the game. That's one of our things that we're working on. Maybe it could work. I guess they're answering questions. This is my first time looking over a Twitch chat answering questions, so I'm kind of new at this. I mean, the Jonathan and you salami dislike cheating. What? What is like cheating? Because the crazy resource options. Uh, well, if you yeah. give me the tool for many resources, of course I'm going to use it. Yeah, default mode of play will not like like so. The standard mode of play is not going to have like a million resources per. I think your guys are kind of freaking out there. They're they're kind of whacked out. There they go. What about um, control groups, hotkeys, and camera locations? You can control group your units. That's possible. You can okay. Yeah, we're we're gonna add stuff too. Like that's something we want to add. But basically, most of the default RTS features we want to get in, we haven't gotten. We just haven't gotten them in yet. Mark of Wisdom asks, would they act as a trump card of sorts? He's probably referring to the special, the crazy units, or the the um, the hero units, or commander units. It's not. So I don't know what you mean by that trump card exactly. It's not going to be a kind of unit that's like, if I can just tech up to this unit, I win. I don't like that idea. There will be a certain amount of like. Um, efficiency based on what they do and what they cost, like any other unit. So if if you think of a hero unit, um, it it needs to be very cost effective because you can only build one and they're probably slow, right? So by default it will be cost effective. But it's weak in other ways. It's slow, it can't be everywhere at once, 
and you put a lot of resources into a single thing. So if it goes down in a bad way, you you lose out. So as with any unit, it will have a trade off, and it will be you know, it, it depends. I can show off the control groups array in Studio Ones that I show off the control groups. So you can set your like in uh, other strategy games with CTRL and a number, here we have Team 1, here we have Team 2 now. Um, there we have Team 2, and you can, with double pressing the number, you can jump to the team, but this will lock you on very close with the camera, so I usually don't use that, that needs to be fixed, that's a bug. And once, uh, once I double press the number, I will be locked on and I cannot scroll out again. Um, I cannot have the high vision like I have in the beginning of the uh, beginning of the game, so I'm not using these control groups <laughs> yet. That's a bug. So Mark says, "Wouldn't be the hunting button, but let me read his comment real quick." Yeah, so kind of like Black Lotus. That would be like like, like a, and when I say hero unit, I meant to say super unit. That, that was a, a miss. I misspoke on that. Uh, so you've got commandos, super units, and then like. An overlord type unit that's like a particularly powerful unit. I don't consider those special. They're just, they're just like their stats are exaggerated. So I guess I mean they're sort of special, but yeah. Um. So, but yeah, Mark. I mean, all those things are, are definitely viable. I'm not ruling out any possibilities right now, uh, except that I don't want every faction to have access to all these things because then it's not special anymore. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm very big on making faction diversity and theming uh, properly. So. Um, I want to make sure that, um, you know, is, it, is this the hard AI? Yeah, you just, you this just, like, a stable. very hard, very hard AI. That's what I meant. I think you mean hard very. The hard very AI. <laughs> Hello, eight yeah. eight and squares. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, it's a little bit crazy right now. Jamal, yeah, Jamal is going to be a, a downloadable unit. You can pay, you can pay a hundred bucks for him, and he one shots every unit from across the map. So that's what Jamal does. He's a super sniper. Kills every every unit in building one hit. Only ninety nine ninety nine. Get your DLC. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I'm very I'm I'm a uh, very adamantly against pay to win. That's not something I'm interested in. Pay to win sucks. It really sucks. Absolutely, Lemon. Absolutely. Yeah, we got some good. We got some good uh, looking explosions there. Any fact, I think that that particular asset is like a little bit too high res. I need to lower it down a little bit. Any it's idea like, when we will see Jamal in the game? <laughs> yeah, I already answered that. He he's gonna be a, a he's gonna be a a unit you can buy for a hundred bucks, and he's gonna one shot anything across the map. Ah, so that was answer to that. Okay. <laughs> it'll be it'll be esports ready day one. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so microtransactions are an interesting thing. So let's talk about microtransactions. Um, we haven't we haven't really gotten that far in our thought yet, but I can tell you where my my brain is. I am I am not okay with buying an advantage in the game. I am not sure how I feel about buying alternatives in the game. So let's say for example, um, I don't know what this is. I'm making up something here. Uh, you can choose a hundred options for your whatever in the game. But you get 10 to start with, and you can either earn the other 90. Like, let's say every time you play a game, you get one more option you can unlock. Or you can pay 3 or $5 to unlock all options immediately. But the 10 that you start with are not inherently better than the other 90, but they are just different. That is a gray area for me. I don't know how I feel about that. that that's something like... Um, an example of that. Like League of Legends, for example. Is that a good example? No, that's not right. Okay, if you guys are familiar with League of Legends, I don't really play the game very much, but I know they have the rune system, so as you guys know, there's the MOBA, the five heroes, and you fight on the map. So in League of Legends, before you play the game, you can put runes into this little like chart thing, and it gives your hero a bonus when you're playing the game, right? What I what I don't like is that you start with none, and that you can buy runes to get an advantage. That that's a no no for me. If they would give you equivalent runes to max runes, but not every option by default, but then also allow you to buy the other runes, that's the gray area for me. Because 
you are giving a viable option to the player, but you're also allowing them to buy or earn the other options. And when I say earn, I mean earn over time. So I personally, I'm a bit, I'm a bit conflicted on that right there, but that's kind of where my brain is in terms of, of I can see why they, why they would do it. Um, and I'm not, I, I just don't know. I, I, I'm not opposed to doing that system, but I would do it with some reservations. Uh, as far as cosmetics go, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. So, so you can make all skins and stickers and models, and uh, you could have taunts and dances and whatever people want to do. And your basic. This is one of the areas where RTS does not understand why MOBAs are so popular. Let's be honest, right? MOBAs have dethroned RTS, right? MOBAs have dethroned RTS. RTS used to be the quintessential gaming competitive experience, then RTS is now not that. Why is that? Well, we got to look to MOBAs, right? So I've played a lot of RTS and MOBAs, and my conclusion is basically that uh, there's a couple things that MOBAs do that RTS does not do right now. Number one is complexity of the game. MOBAs are way more complex. There's so much crap in that game, and they always are changing and adding stuff and modifying things, and that's exciting. The other thing you can do is you can play dress-up. It's like having a doll that you can put a dress on or change the hat or something like that. People love doing that stuff. And even though I'm not someone who buys cosmetics, I enjoy doing it too. It's fun to, to mix and match the, the outfits on, on your heroes and stuff. RTS is ripe for that. I mean, you've got so many units per faction, right? So you could have, and people people will, you know that people would just go down there and they would, they would just... Uh, so, sorry to interrupt you, but I have a okay. bug here. I'm always starting with 800,000 income. Okay, that's a bug. You, you see that, Michael? Write that down. Michael in here? He's gone. Michael, write that bug down. I already changed that to 7,000 or in the beginning, but I'm always starting with 800,000. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a bug. If you restart the game, probably, yeah. I restart the game. Fix it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, where was I? So, the cosmetics... So, RTS is right for this sort of thing. So, you've got, you've got like... You can imagine a situation where it's like, all right, this is my faction, and it's like, all right, what? This is my my marine. Okay, I can put a sticker on his shoulder. I can put a sticker on his helmet. I can change the the medic symbol on my medic unit to this other symbol, or whatever. And he can have different camo. He can have different types of whatever. It, it would be a, a skin change, a model change. You could pay ten cents. You pay ten cents for a sticker. And then you can and you can earn stickers after games. I mean, there's so many options that RTS is not doing right now. It, it's it's insanity to me that no one's doing this. Um, and um, yeah, kind of rambling on a little there. Uh, so suffice to say that cosmetics are definitely an option. Um, and the primary concern is that um, at a glance you still can see what's going on. So there's one more thing I want to say about 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 that sort of thing. Sometimes in games, you get cosmetics that are really ridiculous. Like, it's like pink unicorn, rainbow, what the crap's going on cosmetics, okay? So, I think that what I would say is, I had an idea, and let me know what you guys think about this. Um, those things are funny, but they're not funny all the time, right? They're only funny when you see it every once in a while. So, here was my thought. What if there was, like, a... a Every four months or six months or a year or whatever, there is a crazy cosmetics week and everything looks like an absolute circus. And after that's done, you go back to normal with the normal cosmetics that are themed with military and more serious kind of cosmetics. So that's an idea I had had as well. Did the resources work? Okay, it did work. That's good. Yep, works uh, now perfectly. Had to reset so, the um, I, I don't like it when, after a few years, the cosmetics that you can buy in the game get increasingly ridiculous, and increasingly like, like what the heck is going on? Like, I remember this one time I was playing. Um, as I said before, I play a lot of different types of games. So uh, several years ago, I was playing. Um, I was playing Guild Wars 2. Okay, it, this is not an RTS at all. So Guild Wars 2 is, is an MMO, it's an RPG sort of thing, and so. Um, in Guild Wars 2, you can play a Necromancer. A Necromancer is a person who summons the undead and is a very kind of scary thing. And there was a Necromancer I saw in town, and they had like rainbow wings. And I'm like, this is not a Necromancer. This is what I realized. I was like, I was like, I had this moment where I was like, 
why can you buy? Why can you walk around all the time as like a like a like a like a, like a, like a pretty dress and like rainbow wings, butterfly wings, as like a, someone who's summoning the undead? And I realized there's a limit to that sort of thing. So I thought, well, how do you fix that? Well, you could do a limit. Uh, you could do a limit where it's only a certain time of the year or certain certain days, and you you can you can get all that zaniness out of you, and you go back to kind of the general theme of the game. Because if you see every every game, it gets ridiculous. So that's where my thoughts are on cosmetics. Uh, let's see. Okay, hold on. I'll check the chat again. Kind of, kind of back a little bit. <laughs> you don't like chat. <laughs> I do like the chat. It's just that when I answer a question, I go, I ramble for so long, I get lost in the chat. So. Yeah, that sometimes happens. <laughs> we already sold two bags of lemon. That's good. So, we're gonna get a million billion bucks from lemon. Perfect. See, Always send us these bucks. Your army. Always up for these bucks. Vox, Vox asked, we were talking about some sort of, quote, creating your army, unquote, unquote during Generals 2 development. I don't think it actually happened. I think that there's a lot of room for opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity for um, having a system in which you customize your army pre-game. Okay? So I don't know the extent of what we want to do yet. But I don't want to. I don't want to deviate too far from. Um, uh, I don't want to deviate too far from having uh, a base line army that is functional, competitive, and is comprehensive. Like a single faction needs to be comprehensive. Um, I did so. I did play Generals too. What I did not like about Generals too was that you had this. You had this baseline army. And you choose a general. Which would only change like three units, right? Or like three or four units, like, like you get like a new power. That to me is not sufficient. I think that every unit and faction should be as diverse as possible within within reason. So that like you're not gonna have like spellcasters and mage and stuff like that, but but like you want you want to make things as different as possible. And it could be something simple. So for example, if you choose the laser general, if you guys play General Shockwave, you'll know where I'm coming from with this. So General Shockwave is a mod for General Zero. So in General Shockwave. Like if you choose the laser general, they did a modification to the to the to the U.S. Ranger so that it's like a laser ranger. Not a very big difference, but it is a difference, and it feels different, and it looks different. That's the level of difference we want. That's how you compete with MOBAs. If you look at a MOBA, every hero is just see with with what you can do in those heroes. In RTS, <coughs> RTS has not has not taken a page from that book, and they need to. Uh, let's see. Uh, Titan asks, what sub options will units have? For example, we'll be able to swap between weapons on a unit. So there's a T90 between yada yada and blah blah. Perhaps a choice of individual upgrades. Example, anti air anti air gun upgrade for tanks. Again. Okay, so that's a really good question. Um, the, the short version is, I want to have these kinds of things in the game. But it will not be for every unit. This goes back to that idea of of how do you make a faction diverse, and it's what you have and don't have makes it diverse. So, for example, if you have a team, you have like an expectation of what your what your MBTs are, like your main battle tanks, and they tend to just have like a turret and they shoot and they move, right? Well, let's say a second team, and that's like most of your team. Then you have a team that has. Um, but then you have a team that has like, uh, what, what am I thinking here? I lost my train of thought. Right. So you have a team that has a, a, a main battle tank that can self upgrade on a per unit basis. That becomes a unique feature of that faction. If every faction can do it, it's not unique. If a couple of factions can do it, it is unique. So I would think about how I want that faction to play. Uh, so let's say for example, it's a hit and run style faction, but you need a little bit of tank of tanky unit to help with certain situations. So the main battle tank can be upgraded to either move faster or be tougher. And you make that decision based on how you upgrade that unit. So that would be an example of that sort of thing. Um, but it, 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 like he, like Titan suggests, it's very similar to the anti-air gun upgrade for the Overlord tank. It's something like that. Uh, let's see. And Vox makes a comment on the cosmetics. I agree. Having them look different would be interesting. Uh, let's see. Planet size of pink camo murder simulator. Exactly, right? Lemon, it gets ridiculous after a while. It's like there, there's, you get clowns and rainbows and stuff. It just, it just turns into something something gaudy. 
And, it, and so it, it requires, you need to have the right amount of control with it. So I thought we had that venting you know, moment where every year it's like, April Fool's week, you get to do whatever you want and your tanks are unicorns and the, the jets are marshmallows, whatever the heck else you want to do. To be honest, then, having then tanks as unicorns, swim. that would be awesome. As what? Tank, unicorns? Tanks as unicorns, that would be awesome. I would totally buy that game. <laughs> yeah, but only for a week, though. You only get it for a week. So you pay your dollar to make your tank into a unicorn, but you only get it for a week. So the next year it comes around, you can be a ridiculous and silly and flam point, and it goes away again, so... Yeah, that's true, that's true. But it would be totally yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so Mark Wisman asked a really cool question. He says, uh, for the time limit, alternative unit designs for the time limit alternative alternate unit designs would that be with in-game currency or out-game currency i.e. gold currency versus the premium currency I mean, uh, I don't know, the rainbow fairy something legions and what okay yeah okay so um so mark of wisdom asks mark asks about um uh, the types of currency you can earn so the the typical idea, so this may change. So as we get into a bigger, as we grow as a, 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 a little studio level project, I might not have control over this. Uh, a lot of times the designers don't have control over uh, the monetization aspects, but I would definitely be vocal about it against against the sort of against this sort of thing. So the typical the typical situation right now in games is you get two currencies. You get a currency that you earn when you play the game, like you know wood chips or whatever and then you get a currency that you can pay real money for like gold coins and you use those gold coins to buy uh something in the store so if, if it's like you know uh and it might be you can buy this marine skin for 30 wood chips <laughs> wood chips i don't know where i'm getting this from. wood chips and uh <laughs> yeah it's like a wooden nick or something reference to the uh, regular two cinematic i don't think a wooden nick about your legacy <laughs> That's an old school thing. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> man, I'm like totally burning out right now. Uh, so, so you have wood chips, and you, you buy, you pay thirty, you get a, a cosmetic for your marine, and then, um, or you can pay five gold coins for the same cosmetic. And maybe there's premium skins uh, where you buy. Uh, a cosmetic with only the, the, the gold coins that you buy with money. That's the typical step right now. Um, and in some games also allow you to just pay money, like, like pay a single dollar, an actual money, you don't buy a currency and, and, and buy a sort of thing right now. So I am against paid currencies, the premium currency, and the reason why is because of this. Um, it, I think it's predatory. So when you, what happens is like, they say like, all right, you can buy you can buy your gems, and you can get 143 gems, or 629.3 gems, and it's like, this is a bigger bonus, you get more. And then you go to buy something, and it's designed in such a way that you have to spend more money than you want to. So um, I, I largely stay away from those kind of purchases because it's it's really annoying that the, the thing is worth a certain amount of gems, but you can't buy that amount of gems. You have to buy a higher value of gems than have leftover gems. So it's like, if, imagine if that happened in a grocery store, right? I want to buy a loaf of bread. The bread costs 200, it costs 100 coins. And you have to buy the coins in a certain interval. So you end up paying $3 for a $2 loaf of bread. And that is, to me, is like, it's very predatory. It's designed to, to it is designed to take more money out of you, and it's not very honest in my opinion. So I would be against that sort of thing. I could see, I can see a reasonable um, argument to be made for a premium in currency if it was exactly one to one. So for example, if you if you put in one dollar and you got a hundred coins out of it one penny equals one coin. And that seems more reasonable. But, it, but they're never designed like that. That's not how they work. They're designed in a way that, that screwed you over. And so that is something that I'm, I'm against. Uh, but I could see a situation where I don't have control over that and, and as the team grows, and that's not in my 
I can't decide that, but I would definitely be complaining about it. <laughs> so, um, what will probably likely happen if I have my way is we're going to have a currency that you earn. So you, let's say you, as you play the game, <laughs> that makes sense to me. So I play the game, I get dog tags or dirt or whatever it is, and you spend the dirt and dog tags on um, things you can buy in the game. And maybe there are some premium uh, skins that you can't buy with that. You have to pay money. But we just do, um, you know, we, we you just pay money for it. I think I think money is a more uh, honest way to do it, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to anyone? Am I, am I rambling here? Does that make sense, Clemens? Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Um, if I may interrupt you with that, uh, what you're right now trying to say. Um, what do you think when multiplayer comes out? What do you think is better? Having something with like StarCraft 2 with the league system, you know, like uh, Bros League, Silver League, uh, Platinum League, Grandmaster League, or do you want something like CNC? Uh, rank 1, rank 2, rank 3, rank 4, rank 5, rank 6. I prefer StarCraft 2 because then you are getting mixed up with the noobs and the pros, depends on how your skill level is. So what is your thought process about that? That's a good question. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure on how I feel about that. I don't know the... I think that I would lean towards StarCraft 2. I think making it more granular is the right way to go. And people people like to see a little metal, and people like to see their divisions and that sort of thing. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, that that could be... that could be something... I, I, don't, I don't really know, but I think that I would lean towards StarCraft 2 on that. So, or something like... So a system like that. Um, and I would, I would separate ranked, we're going to separate ranked from, I don't want to call it casual, it's like, I want to call it something like competitive, but like, ranked is the actual ranked play. Uh, I think, think that those words matter. If you just put, ca so here, here's a problem I have with, um, with people, <laughs> it's like a complaint about people in general. If you put down, so, one of the games I play is uh, Rainbow Six, so if you guys are familiar with Rainbow Six, it's a first person shooter. And there's two modes of play in the game. You can play uh, casual, you can play ranked. Um, so what happens is, people sometimes people play casual, and they do something stupid, or they're losing, and they say, ah, oh, it's just casual. I don't have to play optimally because it's casual. And it's kind of like, all right, what does that really mean? I mean, it's an excuse that you're losing. Is it because you want to just goof around? Like, what is it? So I think if you named it competitive, people would actually take it a little more seriously. And it's not that you want to... You don't want to play um, the non-ranked mode with like playing it as as hard and as serious as possible. But you don't. But but you don't want people goofing around when you're not goofing around. So if you want to goof around, make a custom game and screw around with your friends. That's totally fine. Don't put that burden on other people who are trying to play at least semi-seriously. So um, that's kind of where I'm, I'm thinking about how you know you can about that sort of terminology and um, yeah to answer your question though I kind of got sidetracked there I did it a lot so to answer your question though I, I would I would basically make it so that um, it's more like Starcraft <laughs> that was yeah, because uh, medals, um, people like to see medals that's what you said and I really agree with that medals look cool being rank 1 in the um, in the ladder looks also cool but not as, as cool as medals medals have these have these uh, um, this thing which says that you are cool, that you are pro, that you are the elite. elite. Just seeing you in the ladder as rank one doesn't say anything. I mean, it just says that you are rank one, but nothing really special. The uh, medals are missing. Yeah, Lemon says, uh, and before EA buys you guys and, and ruin and like that's word. The only the only way that if the only if if EA offered to buy us, that means that others are offering to buy us. If EA would ever would ever do that, it, I would basically put in a clause that says like we have total creative control, so you guys are only there for the money, and you're not going to touch the game. <laughs> so that would be my that would be my requirement if EA if EA bought us is to maintain creative control. Um, but yeah, so I was, we were actually discussing this. So there's, uh, we were discussing this yesterday, as a matter of fact. Uh, so one, so there are two types of. Uh, it, there's two areas where people want to flaunt their uh, skill in the game. So you've got you've got um, what I call seniority, and you've got rank. So if you play for a long time, 
people want to feel like they have got their little badge of honor and that's like kind of you know so if, if I play for, for a thousand hours I want a little badge that says I am a lieutenant or whatever you know you are a freak um, then you are basically a freak then if you played for so freak? long yeah, because you played for so long I would give you the metal freak okay all right a thousand hours I'm I mean, after a couple of years, that's not, that's not a long time. If you're if you're if you're a pretty hardcore gamer, you, you can rack up a couple thousand hours in your games. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. <clears throat> um, so the other, so that's that's seniority. The other thing that people want to be recognized for is how skillful they are, right? And oftentimes both. So that would be rank. So if a new player who's really good at RTS, um, <laughs> the no life or badge. Yeah, I think you know. I think if you if you sat and thought about how many hours you put into scenes or some kind of game, you're gonna breach a thousand hours pretty quickly. So, <clears throat> anyway, so <clears throat> the rank thing is like, all right, I'm a new player, but I'm good. So I'm gonna go on the ladder. I climb it. I go silver, gold, diamond, metal, whatever. Those are the two areas that you that you want to have notoriety for is seniority and uh, and ranked. Uh, on a side note. I think that we should totally do something silly where the the rank starts out. You know how it starts like cop. It's like it's like bronze, silver, uh, gold, platinum, diamond, whatever. Well, this is a military themed game, so we should start like literally in mud. That should be the first rank. You got a mud emblem. Then it goes to like dirt and then sand and wood and then like tin or something like that. And eventually, you get up to like the diamond. So. That could be something we could do. Ready, ready, ready. Kind of a joke, but kind of not really. Crickets are chirping. Nobody liked the joke. Anyway, uh, what else we got? Um, so where was I at? Okay, this is what I highlighted next. Would be cool. Choosing Gary looks... Damn. Yep, I agree. With Vo with Vox, he says, it would be cool to choose your gear and Lux has no... no uh, bearing on mechanics. That's, that's the basic idea between... I think I already answered that actually. Uh, yeah, because there's the there's Mark's comment about currency. So Mark says mechanics like the Overlord customizing for tank versus the GLA upgrading via scrapping. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. You, you just kind of put a question mark in that. There's not really a question there. We're not sure the factions are just in GAO. Yeah, we, so we got two more factions that we're working on. They're prototype factions um, to, to figure out what we want to do with the game. Basically, a thousand hours. All right, that's basically it. Have you played? Mark asked, "Have you played Advanced Wars?" I have not. Uh, yeah. So, and Vox says, "What about win-loss ratio?" There's a lot of data we want to have. Um. Okay, gotcha, Mark. So there's a lot of data we want to put in the game, like post game and then like career profile. We talked about that yesterday as well, as a matter of fact. So win loss ratio for a career and then win loss ratio over like the past so many games. That's actually really important. So a truer representation of your current skill is based on like the past like 50 games or past 20 games or whatever, and not your entire career. Because you get better as you play, right? So that's something we're thinking about too. Yeah. A lot of good info. A lot of good info. Almost out of water. So what I'm right now doing is um, Arian Studios suggested that I should beat the AI with just soldiers and uh, missile defenders. I'm right now doing that in case you wonder what I'm doing here. That's what I'm doing here right now. I think it's going to be very difficult but I think we can handle that. Um, problem is going to arise when the artillery comes into play and they do splash damage and they do a lot of damage to uh, my... Um, the units, so I need to be very careful here with these. But I think when I, I rush in, you play StarCraft, right, Clemens? I play StarCraft, yeah. Yeah, you know how you got to split your Marines against Banelings. Uh, yeah, yeah. Got to start doing that. 
Lemon app. A change, for example, every six months or so to a year. Yeah, I agree with that. It's a good idea. Absolute good idea. I like the idea of having like automated tournaments that happen, clan tournaments, clan features, all kinds of stuff. Because one of the things that we want to do is we want to push data for like a clan and playing with your friends. So StarCraft. So here's kind of the thing with me. So StarCraft, when they when they when they were advertising StarCraft um, two in 2010 ish, and throughout StarCraft's expansions. They always pushed the one versus one on everyone. It was either campaign or one versus one. And there were other modes of play, but they really only talked about like ranked play and, um, and one versus one. One versus one is great, but it's not for everyone, right? And I think that most people, so RTS is a difficult thing to play. It's very intense, and playing one versus one versus people is an intense experience. Um, and most people aren't like accustomed to that, in my opinion. So, I think it would be wiser to kind of advertise the game as a team effort and kind of like playing with your friends. But also, but the, but the quintessential experience for the game, will, uh, for competitive, the competitive mode, will still be one, one versus one. So, that's kind of the, um, the general idea uh, uh, on that. So, like, what did he ask exactly? Let's see. I kind, of went, I kind of went off topic. Uh, Vox asked, anyway, I'm going out of order, hold on. Rams keep into tournament, that would look cool. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. That's what Michael says. Is there a button function to spread out units with the X button in general? Okay, this is a really cool thing that Mark asked. So, so this, ble I'm going to rant with this for forever, probably. So, one of the things that, he, there's a constant debate in RTS about what, how much control of what goes on in the game should be manual versus automatic, okay? And so, for example, StarCraft players, when StarCraft 2 came out, uh, when they were showing off, there, people were like, what? You can select multiple buildings? It's Esports is ruined. We can't play StarCraft because you can select more than one building at a time. And, and I don't agree with that. that, that that's kind of ridiculous. Um, so, my philosophy is the... My philosophy is uh, the buttons in the UI, the game in general, should allow you to do what you want to do as easy as possible, but it should not make decisions for you. Okay, so that that's kind of like a catch-all phrase with everything. So, so if you want to queue up units in several war factories, there, I'm I'm not opposed to. Ha to having a way where you can press one button and get a tank queued up in several in several war factories at once. So if you like control click a tank or something like that, it queues it up across all war factories that you have selected or something like that. Um, or, or shift click equals five tanks or something like that. Um, that's, that's totally fine. So his question was about the X button. So if you tap X and generals, they spread out and sometimes they go randomly in other games. I am not opposed to that. Uh, it, I think it's it's a it's a predictable it's predictable. Um, it's something that that you want to do. It's easy to get your unit spread out because because you want that. Um, alternatively, you click and you quickly click around and try to get them to move places. And people will argue, well, that's more skill. That's true, but it's not the kind of skill that is really. I mean, it, it is skill, but it's like. It's kind of an artificial type of skill. Uh, you can make an argument to say, well, why not make it more complex so that, that it's even harder to do that? Um, and then that way you're adding even more skill to the game. But I don't really buy that argument. Good job on your victory. Thank so you. having an X that expands your units from a central point, is, is I think is a good idea. Uh, Titan asks, what's the plan for the story? Is make a guy for the bad guys? Different approach. Um, <clears throat> We haven't really gotten into the details of the story yet. Um, I think that uh, what, what, what's probably going to happen is we're probably going to put the story in the back burner for a while. Uh, the reason why is because there's just so... We want to focus on multiplayer, and there's not really a lot of uh, room for the story. Theming and unit dialogue and that sort of thing. Are you going to quit soon, Clemens? Is that what's going on? Clemens? Clemens? I think he died. Uh, so theming 
it is really good for, for kind of like a background story for stuff. And it will kind of be apparent, like, um, uh, how people think about each other, uh, what, what factions kind of believe in, but and it's and good guys, bad guys, good guys, bad guys is kind of generic. Uh, it's more about points of views would be better. So for example, you know, um, if you have a terrorist type faction, and their kind of thing is like, well, you guys bomb our lands and kill our people. Did you not think that we? Did you think that we would not fight back? Like that's kind of like a point of view, or and then like the other point of view might be like, well, you know, you guys are oppressing your people, so we're going to come in and militarily and step in or something like that. Um, so yeah, but but honestly though, the, the story is not very flushed out right now. We, we got like a little blurb about it, but it's not really that far ahead. Uh, Vox asks, what is the plan uh, max player count for a game? Um, I don't, it will, it will really depend on limitations of the technology. So I don't really think that there should be a limit. <laughs> um, so if we get to like four versus four or five versus five or more, I'm okay with that. I don't really see why we wouldn't do that. Um, so, but it, it depends on what our limitations are with our tech, with our server tech and our engine tech. So that will, that will be the actual limiting factor. Uh, Skymix asks, will we, will we be able to make mods? Eventually, I hope so. That, that, that question was asked a long, uh, uh, earlier in the stream. Um, but it's, it's, it's just so far off in the distance right now that I don't even know exactly. So we'll, we'll see. I'll get to the restrooms we did. He's not dead. Yeah, I'm still alive. I'm uh, I'm here back. Uh, my um, I was almost about to pee in my hose, uh, in my in my uh, toes. Don't do that. Unless you got a pan on the floor. <laughs> a little bucket you can just use. Yeah. <laughs> was really microphone. urgent. I'll be right back to you. I'm gonna get some water. I'll be right back in about 15 seconds or so. Okay, take your time. Okay, so I'm back. I'm going to um, face another very hard AI, or as we like to call them here, hard, <laughs> hard very. Also, hello and welcome back to um, all the viewers, and hello to 14 viewers here on the stream. No, I will not pee in my house uh, box. I will not do that. I hope you are enjoying the stream so far. Yeah, and I played it like 10 times already, but it's okay. I play another round, no problem, no problem. I'm really enjoying that game and I'm really looking forward to the improvements and the updates here on the game. Also, more maps would be awesome. Okay, let's choose the very hard AI and let's get into it, I would say. I, I think, think you mean hard very. Hard very, yeah. I think I will um, cheat a little bit, but only a bit. I will start with 20,000 ore and uh, 10,000 oil to make it a bit fair, more fair. You know, we could do, you, you could do, we could do like a, like a pseudo test for the next patch. If you play a non-cheating AI, but don't build more than like two or three trucks on the ore and the oil, that will represent what we're going to do with the with the resources. So you could do that, or you could play this, it doesn't matter, it's up to you. So um, you mean I should start with <clears throat> normal resources and only play with two or three trucks? Yeah, yeah. So exactly. So, th so what I want to do is I want to limit the amount. Of, I want to limit the the trucks to only one, um, for gathering resources. So to em emulate that, you could play a non-cheating AI with a normal with the normal the default starting amount, like seven thousand two hundred fifty, and then only build that many trucks. Like, unless the, does the AI do more? Maybe they do more. The AI I do more. I think they do like five or six or seven. All right, we'll just do it. Do whatever you want then. Go, okay. You can go back. Go back to the hard, to the very, to the hard very AI. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. <laughs> See you later, Lemon. Bye bye. Thank you, saving. Nice. So, hope everyone is enjoying the stream so far. Man, you are talking a lot, but I really like that. You have a lot of lot to say, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, we need more people in here. We need more people, but we need <laughs> like one hundred people. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of my fault, though, because I, I get... What, so someone asks me a question, and my brain thinks of, like, six other things. I'm like, i got to talk about all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, RTS, game design. And I keep going and going, so... That's just kind of my nature to, to ramble, honestly. Shame on you for doing that. Extreme AI. They start with 100 tanks, and they just attack you right off the bat. Extreme AI, man, I can't even beat the very hard AI, hard very AI. How am I able to beat the extreme AI? Mm -hmm. That's nearly impossible, man. <laughs> oh, I forgot that I have so many resources. Nice, what, what is CNC Labs? Is that, is that like a form or something like that, Skymax? CNC Labs is a website for uh, maps by the community, created by the community. Mm -hmm. Really good site. Cool. Yeah, we're designing some new maps right now. We got we got a bunch of maps down on paper right now, and we're we're, we're this map is not not that strong we're using right now. Uh, so we're gonna try to get some better thinking involved in our map design. Um, that would be an area where I would admit them. I think I'm a bit, I think I'm a bit weak on map design, to be honest. That's kind of an area where I'm not 100 confident. I know the basics, but. I'm not so sure. About so, what? About map design. You could hire me, I'm a map designer. Oh yeah, are you? I am. Yeah. Big pro in map design. Wow, I didn't realize. Oh, holy shit, so many units already. Hard, very AI is very hard. Hard, very AI. Get that dozer back to safety. Ah, I really should. By the way, Jonathan. What's up? Did you know that the unit is ready? Yeah, I know. I don't know if you know it, but the unit is ready. I, uh. It's something I've heard. So, just let you know. On the internet, the units are ready. Yeah. Unit ready. Yep. Unit ready. I know you're talking about. We used to have this annoying sound effect, it's like ching. -ch it's so kind of like sound every time you get resources. That was really annoying. Get rid yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. Had to get rid of that one. Hello, many nukes. Welcome to the so, stream. Many Nux 11. I think it's Nukes. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being dumb. <clears throat> Don't be too dumb, otherwise the um, German is going to hit you again. So, yeah, how do we do the... Um, part of it is the economy, so our economy is a little bit out of control right now. Um, so that'll be part of the problem. Like I said, we gotta we gotta limit the amount of gatherers that can hit a single um, resource node. What I want to, do, or you know, what we should do instead. No, mm -hmm. you don't. Here's what we want to do. We don't want to limit the amount of amount of trucks that can gather resources. We want to limit the amount of trucks that can drop off and make sure that we have a drop off time per truck. The reason why we do that is because. We can then add scalable upgrades to resource. So, what's not what's not interesting is what we have right now. What we have right now is you build a refinery, then you queue up trucks, and then that's it. You don't even think about it anymore. So, what we want to do is we want to have upgrades that can be applied to your refineries. That and then maybe while the upgrade is happening, it. You can't drop resources off at the building, but once the upgrade is done, a sec like more trucks can drop off simultaneously or something like that. So then you have you have that effect from StarCraft, where you scale your well. It's not exactly the same. It, it, it's a stronger decision to make where you can um, you can make you, you decide when you want to upgrade that resource center. Because you don't want to just do it immediately. You might not want to because then you don't have resources coming at, at all. So, anyway, does that make sense, what I said? 
Uh, yeah, kind of. Okay, so anyway, the point is we want to add scalable ways for you to scale the resources at a given resource node with some certain time constraints so that the decision making for the player is more impactful in the game. Uh, Vox asks, any plans for construction for constructible super weapons, nukes for example? Um, yeah, you know, I'm not really against super weapons. Um, I think that, I, I, I don't see why not. But I do think it would be a good idea to have them be an option you can turn off. In which case, we can't have any upgrades. So if you remember in the super weapons, if you remember in um, if you remember China from from, uh, from generals, they had tank upgrades in, in the super weapons. So if you didn't play with super weapons, you couldn't get the upgrades for the tanks, which is just silly in my opinion. So, so to answer your question, yes. Mark says, Jonathan, you should, you might actually. You actually might want to look to the CNC map building community. CNC HD had played some of the maps they made, and they are really, they are extremely good. Yeah, maybe. Why not? Call the game down. <laughs> Nuke the Middle East. It's gonna glass it. Uh, yeah, so what, what Mark's saying is right. I never, I never actually considered that, having upgrades for super weapons, that's an interesting idea. Upgrades for super weapons, that would be a perfect idea. So they start very cheap and very uh, weak, and then you can upgrade them, that would be perfect. I agree with that idea. I don't yeah. I don't uh, remember a RTS game which has done that before. Yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. It would, be, uh, too. would be unique. Another thing too that's, that's in a similar vein of super weapons are, are what I call powers or general powers from from generals. I do like these a lot. Um, and but, so here's the complaint with with powers. People, I think people don't like it when when you have a power and you click it, you activate it, and it just erases something of your opponents. Or when it happens to you, that sucks. So if you remember, like for example, like in, in CNC three, not had a cloak field. And you could use the cloak field on enemy infantry, and it would kill the infantry instantly. That, I hated that so much. It does not. It is not something that should exist in RTS, in my opinion. You should not. You should not be able to click and erase something uh, immediately. However, with pat with certain powers, though, what you can do is you can add a lot of warning signs for before the power hits. And and power is going to add a lot of strategical value to your particular strategy or tactical or tactical moves throughout the game. So, for example, a good example of a power would be. In generals, um, um, a good example would be something like um, the artillery barrage from from generals, from China and generals. So the way it worked was this: you, you, you'd earn the power, and you'd click a target, and then there would be several warning signs before it actually hit. So the first warning sign was a sound effect. You hear a boom, 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 boom in the distance, right? So your enemy, so everyone on the map knew that there was an artillery barrage coming somewhere. So yeah, that I was really like that. I really like that. Second, right. The, the second warning is that if you had the map revealed in a certain area, you could see the little dots, the little shells, traveling across the map. That was warning number two. And the third warning was that um, right before the artillery hit, you hear like a, like a the incoming sound. I can't make the sound very well the incoming sound of the artillery shells. And then they would hit and do damage. Okay, so you get three warnings. That's a much better designed power. It's still powerful. You can still damage a, a part of a base. If the player's not paying attention, that might lose units. And you can use it in, in an attack. So you can use it, you can use like an A-10 strike or a carpet bombing or something like that while you're using your units to, to advance. And, and that is a much more reasonable way to design powers in my opinion so that's kind of where I'm at right there the powers yeah it was done Mark the cloak field coming infantry was really stupid I did not like that I, I couldn't I can't I really disagree with people who, who defend it people who defend it all the time They're like well it's okay because you gotta pay so much money and for the cloak field to be used and you can't use it on your infant, your own dudes so therefore it was balanced, and it's like, it's not its not always about whether or not it's balanced. It's about, does it feel like a, like a 
fun interaction, right? So. All right, so let's see. We have great ammo. Would be so nice. Would be nice to get the visual bombs. information. Uh, that it had. So many good questions here on the stream. Okay, hold on. I'm still going down the list here. So Mark asked, or he's, he makes a comparison to what I said about the artillery barrage and the uh, the planes that come in. So yes, it's the same kind of thing. It can be shot down. So there is counterplay that can happen. Uh, by by default, there will be a certain amount of counterplay that cannot happen because you get artillery striked on buildings, but there's a certain level of that you can't avoid, but um, as long as you mitigate things like certain buildings only have one limit of those, then you can pretty much avoid it. There's always a way around it, so. Um, Metabus asks, how about the strategic weapons like the no power bomb, which was the EMP, many nukes clarifies. Yeah, it's, it's, that's on the table. I don't, you know, I haven't really thought a lot about, um, exactly what kind of our, uh, you know, what the powers are yet, but that's something's on the table. Bloody accident, bloody accident says, uh, it'd be nice to get visual info when we get attacked on the map, absolutely. So we need, we need mini-map alerts, definitely. There's, like I said, there's a lot of basic things we haven't gotten in the game yet um, that are, are standard in RTS, so that's those things are on the to-do list. That's part of that's and Mark says he likes to use powers as an opening salvo to, to soften up defenses. That's part of why you need these things, honestly. So if we make powerful defenses, you need powerful counters. It's as simple as that. So um, that's part of the uh, part of the idea. And the counter to that is building your defenses intelligently and spreading them around and stuff like that. So there's a lot of counterplay that can happen. Ooh, I'm running out of all here. Um, many nukes ask if I ever played World in Conflict. I think I have, but it's been a long time ago. It's it's been a while. And he says they had strategic power of like play that only that only target enemy units. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's interesting. I'm not opposed to that idea inherently. I haven't really thought much about it, so I would I would need to think about that more over time. But that's that's kind of an interesting idea. Yeah, Mark was the demo. The demo rebel ambush. Yeah, I'm against. I'm against instantly spawning units wherever you click. That's that's a, another version of like the cloak field that erases infantry. Uh, yeah, I I, I, I dislike this as well. That was pretty OP in zero hour when you has had just demo demo rebel ambush, and they were just destroying your units instantly with just boom. There we are. Now you're dead. I really yeah. hated that. So I dislike that, and I. Don't want to see that again. Yeah. So general rule of thumb for my for my design for this sort of thing is like, if if you can if it's an instant effect that hurts your enemy, it's probably a no no, right? That's probably where I'm at. If it's an instant if if it's an instant effect, well, um, it depends on the helpful effect for you. Like, um. We'll leave it at that. I don't know yet. There's other there's other caveats, and we'll decide. How, we'll, we'll we'll see how we design the powers to be for, but we'll see. Yeah. So and Mark talks about the the paratrooper drop. That's much more reasonable. There's counterplay involved. And if if you see the drop, you can either punish it by attacking them or determine there's too much and run away. So you you have decisions to make. When the, when the demo. Rebels spawn in. You can't do anything. You have to just either fight them or die. It's like it, it's kind of silly. Oh shit! I think I'm going to die now. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, we can do that. We we could implement something like that for sure. Oh, yeah, you know, heals the units like a medic. Sure. Medic? Medic would be awesome. Or like a repair unit. Yep. What do you think about snipers? Snipers? Uh, I consider that a specialty unit, and I consider that a unit that... That's one of those units where I wouldn't put it on every faction. I'd put it only on a couple factions. So... Because snipers were pretty OP in generals. Just imagine yeah. having 10 snipers against an infantry general. The infantry general is screwed. 
Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that. I, they would be they would be kind of technical unit, and if you just let them shoot anything that they wanted to, they wouldn't be that efficient. But if you if you snipe off certain units, then you then it would be better, you know. So that's something that. Can I know. do green against green? That's interesting. Let's do green versus green. It'd be hard to tell what's going on. Maybe it's funny that's. That this is possible. That's funny. <laughs> a super sniper like German kill that could Yeah, that's out. possible. Oh, I think my game crashed. Good. So choosing the same color for both players, the game will crash then. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's dead. Need to restart it. No, I'll be trying to save you, but it's too late. So don't do green versus green, but it's too late. I don't. I don't know exactly what. Well, so that, that's a commando. So you've got commandos, super units, and that's basically it. But you know, I, I'm not. I don't know how I feel about that. It, it, it's kind of a case, but whenever you have like weird abilities like that in the game, it's kind of a case by case scenario. If it is something that that we want to do for for sure, so. Um, it's hard to tell what we want to do right now, it, but like tried and tested units like a tank or a rifle infantry or a jet, like those things are pretty safe. We can add those in as much as we want, make variations of those. Yes. Okay. This is a great question. Bloody accident asks. So I have a long list of cool things I want our programmers to work on, but you know their their hands are full. So um, there's a couple things I want to do with infantry. So um, one of the things is. Uh, garrison a building, which we all know how that works. You get in the building, and then you uh, can shoot out, and then you can be you can be removed with a certain attack comes around. So we decided to take a step further. We're thinking about uh, you can choose between having the infantry inside the building or on top of the building. And if they're on top of the building, they get a range advantage, but they're exposed to things like helicopters and that sort of thing. If they're in the building, they they don't get the range advantage, but and and they but they are tougher. And so what we'll probably do is is as the building takes damage, the MP will take minor damage to kind of imply that they are not totally safe, but they're much safer. So if the if the full building comes down, the infantry will probably eject with like half their health. But that's like totally worth it because the infantry get much longer lifespan out of that. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to do infantry cover. Uh, and we and this is gonna be part of our directional damage system. So if a if a vehicle if a unit gets shot in the front, they take less, they take normal damage. They get shot in the sides or the rear, they take more damage, right? So um, an infantry can get behind like little cover, and it, they take reduced damage if they're getting hit from the front. That's kind of what we want to do uh, ultimately. Um, that would depend on how possible that is. That's, that's that's what we want to do. We'll see if we can if we can get it accomplished. But that will give infantry a lot more love than they need. So, the yeah, infantry really needs a lot lot more love. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot, there's a lot of wonky things going on right now. It, it it's it's funny when you when you work on a game, you get to this point. There's so much work that goes into just this point, and then you take a step back and you're like. Man, there's so many more things I have to do, and people don't realize how much work it takes to get to this point. So um, I totally agree with, with all these things that we're saying, and it's, it's just a matter of time, and, and we'll get there eventually. But it's just going to take take some time. So, I mean, and like I said earlier, we're going yeah. through a, we're going through like a restructure in our uh, in our project right now. So we got we got some spring cleaning to do, basically. Some summer cleaning, whatever, whatever season it is right now. I mean, the important thing is that you take your time. Um, studios always yeah. fail when they rush things, so don't rush things. Take your time, please, and uh, relax with the programming. Take it easy, and uh, this way you will develop a great game, I think. Yep, yeah, I agree with that. Those are wise words. Also, don't the, uh... don't set a deadline, so... This game is going to launch on December. Please don't do that. Just okay. it's, say it's coming out tomorrow. It's coming out tomorrow. That's the deadline. <laughs> no, but uh, what's that famous quote by uh, the guy from Nintendo, Shiro Guru Miyamoto? He's like, a, he's like a delayed, or he said, a delayed game is eventually good, but a 
a rushed game is bad forever or something like that. I forget what he said. No, I, I agree 100% with that. I don't yeah, he's like. Pretty, he's a pretty cool guy. I don't like rushed games. Yeah, he's very cool. Yeah. It's tomorrow. Avi, get working. We're releasing tomorrow. No more excuses. We need all the systems built. We need multiplayer. We need everything in tomorrow. Yeah, we, co we covered a lot of information. We covered microtransactions, we covered powers, and infantry covered all kinds of stuff. Kinds I think stuff. we covered everything. So, yeah, so our, our plan, Vox, is once we get the game in a really cool state, we're going to call EA, and we're going to sell the game and our soul for maximum profit, and then go live on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what our plan is. <laughs> Sounds like a solid plan, man. <laughs> <laughs> he says no. I mean, when you sold, uh, sell a game, sell it to Blizzard, please, because Blizzard is awesome. <laughs> I mean, like, the going prices for Souls is pretty good recently, so you should consider it. Obvious, join us in our live stream. Channel. Whew. Do we want to call this the last game? Uh, yeah, it's, it's fine. I think that I'm pretty much exhausted. This is my first time doing it. I think it's pretty fun. I enjoy this. And um, there's a lot of information we went over. And... Yeah, also enjoying but... this. So, also my first time here doing this with the devs. So, very much, very much enjoyed that. Yeah, I didn't really get you. Know, CNC Four is a weird one. Like, uh, I think it was like some kind of an attempt to appeal to Asian markets. I'm not really sure what they were doing with that game. I played the beta and I was just like, eh, not for me. Bloody accident asks, how do you finance the development? We use blood, sweat, and tears. That's how we put it. That's how we finance development. I can confirm that. Yeah, we, we, we have. <laughs> I don't know. Is it is it something we can say, Avi? Like, I, I think so. Like, I don't know, I'm not saying. I don't know. I don't know what I can say. Okay. Blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I really we, we can't. There, there's no cash at all right now. There's no financing going on. This is all running on passion. I thought you were all millionaires. Sweet. Yeah, right, yeah, I wish. If we if we were millionaires, this would be, we'd, we'd be much further ahead. You could just buy, uh, you could buy EA then. <laughs> we're discussing that, buddy. That's something we're talking about. I think, I think that it, it's possible. I think we could do it. I don't, I don't know the details of crowdfunding. I understand how it works and that sort of thing, but I don't know, like, everything about it. So I think we could pull it off, but it's not my decision to make, so I don't really know. Well, you could do Patreon or um, Kickstarter or something like that. Kickstarter is the most, most popular guys, thing for that. You guys see that turret miss right there? It missed. It's weird. Go back to that Abrams that was shooting that turret, please. Uh, I don't know where it is. Click on that health. Ah. What, what's, the, what's the health at? Click on that health. That the tank is damaged. Oh, damn. No, it's... Ah, uh, forget it, it's too late. It, it, it already took damage again. I wanted to see what the health it was. Anyway. Why shouldn't we use Kickstarter squares? Bloody Accident asks, um... Where are we located? We got some guys in Israel, some guys in the US, and one guy in Indonesia. Or is it Indonesia? Yeah, that's right, Indonesia. Ready, ready. Ready for duty. Ready. Ready. Uh, it's 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 a uh, it's tiring to talk. <laughs> I'm kinda <of> tired, like <laughs> Just talking about all this stuff. It's me. Yeah, I'm also tired from playing all these AI. <laughs> it's yeah, my, like, my 11th game or so. 
That's good to know. I did not know that, Squares. So, so, he, so Square says if you don't reach the goal on Kickstarter, you don't get anything. But if Indiegogo, you get partial funds. That's yeah, there's uh, flexible funding. You can get um, the funding done, even if the uh, goal is not reached. Called flexible funding. Yeah, we, we, we discussed that. We discussed Patreon. We discussed, you know, whatever. Selling cats. I don't know. Selling cats? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> There's enough cats in the world, let's be honest. <laughs> you know that That's I'm funny. a cat you know that I'm a cat freak, right? <laughs> I didn't know that. I'm a cat freak. <laughs> oh. If you really so you like cats a lot? I like uh, I adore cats. I really love cats. I like I like cats. Uh, but I do like dogs better. I, I do I, cats are, are are very good and I'm good with cats. I was mostly joking about selling them, but I, I do I think I prefer a dog. Except well, in terms of the dog, like pugs, I don't. Sorry for those who like small dogs. I don't like small lap dogs. I'm not a fan of small lap dogs. It needs to be. If I could pick up the dog with one hand, it's not really a dog. Okay. It needs to be bigger. So. Yeah, I really agree with that. What I also would like to see is maybe uh, early access on um, Steam, so everyone can enjoy the game. Yeah. Okay, I think that's basically it. Um, Arrayan Studio, can you post the link to the Discord in the chat again? That would be awesome. Yeah. Well, I could do that as, as well, um, but then the music will stop. Well, let's do that. Uh, Finny is... asks, what's the price of the game? We don't have a price yet. We don't know. $500. It's yeah. It's it's about. Uh, see, what did it cost to fund League of Legends? About twelve million dollars. Can you can you spare us twelve million for one copy? That would be awesome. <laughs> we can finish the game. He's a crazy cat lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am the crazy cat lady. <laughs> ah, Vox did did beat me to it. Vox was faster. Cool. Hopefully next time we increase our population by 50%. Michael, is this a normal stream size? You guys have had more before, haven't you? Alright, I guess that's it for now. Well, I really enjoyed my time with you guys. There you go. He's yeah, got it right. Did it too. And thanks for tuning in. Thanks for... Um, discussing this game with the developers and me and thank you for letting me uh, stream your game really awesome yeah sure great guess we'll talk uh, later about more information have uh, a good day everyone later bye bye